precisa Hello! Welcome to You Don't Know Vanilla JS. On this video, we are going to make a very simple but useful and sexy slider. A slider is like a, not as a slider, like a carousel, whatever you want to call it. We're just going to take these five slides and we're going to make them show up one after the other. That's what we're going to do. All right. So I already have the CSS. And as you can see, the CSS is here. I have uh, some body styles, whatever. The slider has a position of relative. Uh, the slider item has a height of 500 pixels. It is centering the number that I have over here. Not a big deal. It is bigger, all right. And this is how they look. All right, so step first would be, first step would be to have a, a, the, the item should, all the all of them should be on the same line. So to do this, we're going to do position absolute top zero. All right, so now we have them all on the same line. Now what I want to do is have a class name over here called showing. And in showing, I am going to make the Z index of let's say one. And I'm going to give the slider items a Z index of zero. And we'll see what happens. So for example, if I come here and I give the item, the class showing, let's see what happens. There you go. You have the one here. Now, if I give the item a class showing this one, for example, as you can see now it's number three. So that's what we're going to do. Basically, we're going to just move the slider forward and that will make it up into a transition. Like that will just make it a transition. One, two, three, we're going to make it forward. All right. So for our script here, what we want to do is I'm going to define a constant and I'm going to call this constant showing class. And this one is called showing, which is the same thing over here on my styles. Next up, I am going to get the first slider, first slide with document query selector. And query selector is cool because I can use a CSS selector. In this case, what I can do is something like this and I can do first child. That's what query selector is cool because you can do like some CSS kind of stuff there. All right. And now let's console log. No, you know what? No, let's just do uh, first slide class list at first, uh, no, showing class, showing class. Okay. Now we come back here and we inspect. Whoop. Okay. If I refresh, the first one has the class showing. So as you can see, it is a starting on the number one. All right, so this is good enough. Now the problem is that what I wanna do is I wanna make a function. And this is the things I wanna do. I wanna take the current slide and I wanna remove his showing class. I wanna get his brother, the next one, and I want to add the showing class over here. Then I want to call the function again. And that function is going to get the current slide and is going to remove it and get the next one and add the other class. This is like the same old, same old. Uh, it's going to repeat itself. All right. So let's create that function. Let's do const uh, slide. I don't know. You can call it start slide, whatever. All right, you can even make this into a function like this without the need of a ES6 slide. All right. Now what I'm gonna do here is I am gonna take, instead of the first slide, I am gonna take the current slide. Current slide. And I'm gonna ask for an element with the class showing. All right. 
I have to put the dot here because this asks me for the class name. Not only not only the class name, but also the selector, the CSS selector for the dot. Okay. So now I have to check. Let's see just here. Let's console log this current slide. Call the function slide. All right. So the first, the current slide is no. This is because there is no slide with the showing class, as you can see. So what we can do is you can do if current slide, and here we will do something later else and here we do first slide class list at showing class all right so let's see we refresh and because there is no current slide it is going to add the showing class to the first slide okay this part is working now what happens if we find the current slide then what we need to do will be to remove the class name showing from him so what we need to do is do current slide that class list that remove showing class. All right. And then what we need to do is find the next brother. So let's try to do that. Next slide equals, let's do current slide, next sibling element. As you can see here, it explains to me that next element sibling returns the first following sibling that is an element. Otherwise, it returns no. And this one, it just returns the next sibling. Even if it's not an element, it could be a number, it could be a text. In this case, I wanna be an element. Awesome. So now let's console log that. When do you think that I'm not going to have a next sibling? I am not gonna have a next sibling when I come into the slide number five. This is because when the, when the slide number five comes, he's not going to have an element sibling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say again, if next slide, this means if there is a sibling, then I am going to do next slide, class list at showing class. If there is not a sibling, this means if we are on the last slide, I am gonna just do what I did here. I'm gonna add it to the first one, okay? Let's see. If I come here and I refresh, okay, I have this showing one over here, so it's working. Now, in the JavaScript world, how do we call a function repeatedly, many times? For this, we're gonna make a function. We're gonna use the function called set interval set interval calls a function every x milliseconds that you give it so in this case i'm going to say first call the function slide when i call the function slide for the first time what it's going to do is that it's going to add the showing class to the first slide which is cool and then i want to repeat the same process every one second so i'm going to say that call the function slide every let's do two seconds two seconds is 2000 milliseconds and we're good to go. So now let's see if we come here. And now I want you to look at the class names. And I want you to look, of course, at the number over here when I refresh, which is now. All right, let's see. And you see it's switching the class. It's finding the brother and it's switching the class, which is cool. Now it's on the last one. And it goes back to the first one because it finds that there is no brother. So it goes back to the first one. How cool is that? All right, so the JavaScript is working. Now what we need to do would be on CSS. Let's just make this a little bit prettier. And in CSS, let's make all the slider items. Let's make them opacity zero and showing make it opacity one. Let's see. And also let's make them um, transition. Opacity, let's do five seconds, uh, no, half a second is in out. So now it should look prettier. Let's refresh. Oh, and now and you can see 
it's become it's, it's more pretty because now we have opacity, which is cool. Sweet. Now I think you could also do if you wanted to some transform here, scale 0 0.9, for example. And here you can do transform none. Let's see. And tra let's make transition. Uh, oh, I don't know if it will work. Oh, there you go. So it, I, it feels all right. It doesn't feel bad. It likes they die and they come back. That looks kind of cool if you ask me. All right. And there you have it. A full vanilla JavaScript CSS slider with less than 54 to 71. Less, that, less than 20 lines of code, of JavaScript code. This is so much better than you going somewhere and downloading some JavaScript file that you don't know how it works and adding some more uh, weight to your website. This is light as fuck and it does the job. And also you can customize it here with the transformations and with the fadings and it looks kinda cool, it looks kinda cool. Thank you for watching. I am gonna leave this link on the bottom of the page because I want you to use it. I want you to hack it. I want you to show me what you can do more. If you want to, what would be awesome to do would be you should add maybe two arrows. And when, you, when I click on one arrow, I go forward. And when, click, when I click on other arrow, I go backwards. That would be awesome. Uh, you know how to find next element. Maybe you can also know how to find previous element. All right. So that would be something super cool if you could do that. Next and previous pagin um yeah, next and previous slide will be awesome if you could do it. Let me know if you like this kind of content on the comments. Um if you want to learn more vanilla JS, please check out the full stack course that we have on Nomad Academy. We also have a free vanilla JS course as an introduction, fundamentals of vanilla JavaScript. If you don't know what if means, if you don't know what function means, if you don't know what const means, then go and take that free vanilla JS course. If you know what that means and you want to build a full YouTube clone with me, recording video, making a video player, uh, registering users, handling databases, all that stuff, then please check out the JavaScript full stack course. And you know, as always, stay awesome, eat the kimchi. Bye-bye.